my lord and my god, I firmly believe that you are here. That you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. We read today, in the first reading, how the prophet Elijah was tired of the Israelites who were following Baal, happy to please any god they fancied. And so Elijah asked the people to make up their minds. How long will you straddle the issue? If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. <laughs> Elijah was your only prophet, Lord. Was the prophet of Baal numbered 450? You see, <laughs> that is not a winning ratio. I don't know what the ratio is around you. Some people feel sometimes like the enemy has more followers than God. Like we're losing numbers and the odds are always stacked against us. Like there is no way we can win this battle against evil. Like finding a Christian faithful to the gospel is becoming more difficult than finding a needle in a haystack. <laughs> and the enemy enjoys this so much, helping us to develop a victim complex, tempting us to give up because it is exhausting to always swim against the tide. Because in this turmoil of absurd ideologies, Christians are the weirdos. Because not only the king walks around naked, but a whole crowd of naked people applaud him. <laughs> Whilst we are the only people who denounce the stupidity of this international uniform that they try to impose on us. Well, I don't know if this resonates with you, but it certainly resonates with many Christians. So, Jesus, for all those who feel like this, we meditate today on this episode of the first Book of Kings. 450 prophets preaching nonsense against one who trusted in you, Lord. So, Elijah obliges people to make up their minds to choose sides and stop messing about with Baal and Yahweh. He says to the people, Give us two bulls. Let the prophets of Baal cut one into pieces and place it on the wood, but start no fire. I shall prepare the other and place it on the wood, but start no fire. You shall call on your gods and I will call on the Lord. And the God who answers with fire is God. Elijah was risking his neck with this test, but they all agreed to do it. So the prophets of Baal prepared the bull and called on Baal from morning to noon, but there was no answer. Then they hoped around the altar, but nothing happened. <laughs> Elijah started mocking them, you remember? Call louder, he said, for your God may be meditating, or may have retired, or may be on a journey. Perhaps he is asleep. <laughs> so they called out louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom, until blood gushed over them, but nothing happened. Then, Lord, your prophet, Elijah, said to all the people, come here to me. And in front of them, he repaired your altar that they had previously destroyed. He dug a large trench around the altar, arranged the wood, and laid the bull on top of the wood pile. But Elijah didn't want you, Lord, to prove your power more or less, <laughs> kind of a little. He wanted you to make it abundantly clear that you are God. Now, Calling down fire from heaven to burn the offering didn't seem proof enough to him. <laughs> so he decided to make things more difficult. Bring water, he said, and pour it over the burned offering and over the wood. 
Now you, Lord, would have to send enough fire to ignite the wet wood. But then Elijah thought, ah, well, even more difficult yet. Do it again, he said. <laughs> and they did it again. Now the bull and the wood weren't wet. They were drenched. But he thought, bah, bah still too easy for you, Lord. <laughs> Let's add an extra layer of challenge here. <laughs> Do it a third time, he said. Now the people were feeling like firemen trying to put out a fire that hadn't started yet. The water, we read, flowed around the altar and the trench was filled with water. Now the wood was literally soaked. Elijah thought you, Lord, would have to perform not just a miracle, but a big one. He trusted you, and you, Lord, never leave those who trust you in the lurch. So Elijah prayed to you out loud, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God, that I am your servant, and have done all these things by your command. Answer me, Lord, that these people may know that you, Lord, are God, and bring them back to their senses. <laughs> and then you, Lord, sent your fire and consumed that burnt offering, wood, stones, and dust, and it lapped up the water in the trench. Seeing this, all the people fell prostrate and said, The Lord is God. The Lord is God. <laughs> what a day. What a performance. What a prophet and what a God. How I wish, Lord, to have the same faith, the same trust in you that the prophet Elijah had. How I wish I would grow bolder in the face of difficulties like the prophet, and never lose my confidence in you. Jesus, may I never forget that you are God, that you are a powerful God, that you show your power precisely when things turn bad. And when things get more difficult, when obstacles seem insurmountable, when we find ourselves fighting against all odds, then the time has come for you to prove that you are a powerful God and you are still in control. Our world needs more Christians like the prophet Elijah, more children of God who trust their Father and grow bolder when things get worse. When legislation goes against Christians and against life, and when we think things can get any worse, the hordes of the enemy find new ways to make that happen. Things get even more difficult. And, wh and when we think that we have reached the bottom of the abyss, then they add an extra layer of challenge and we find an even greater depth below. Mary, my mother immaculate, I ask you today to help your children never to lose heart, and we may never lose trust in God. Because no matter how much filth the enemy throws into the world, soaking our offering in it, your son Mary will send the fire of the Holy Spirit to cauterize, to purify, to destroy that filth and turn it into ashes, which, for us, will smell like incense. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, 
intercede for me.